While coronavirus has sent the markets into turmoil and forced hundreds of thousands of U.S. businesses to shut their doors, Amazon's stock has been hitting all-time highs. Now, more than ever, people are depending on the everything store to bring goods to the safety of their homes. So while the majority of Americans follow indefinite orders to work from home or lose jobs that can't be done remotely, hundreds of thousands of Amazon workers are going into its 175 fulfillment centers around the world every day to meet unprecedented demand. Uh, I absolutely feel safe uh, coming to the building every day. Um, I would not be here if I didn't. But some are staging walkouts because they say Amazon isn't doing enough to keep them safe. Going into work kind of scares me because uh, we have a silent killer inside of our job and Amazon is not taking the proper precautions to slow the spread or even stop the spread. I have to do this. I can't not pay my bills and live my life. But then it was just really uneasy knowing that I could possibly contract COVID-19 while at work and either become ill or even possibly die from it. Workers have that difficult choice of like, do I go to work or do I, and, and risk it or do I have no money? basically. CNBC talked to Amazon workers around the country to find out what it's really like to work inside an Amazon warehouse right now, and what Amazon's doing to protect them while managing to keep the vast majority of its warehouses open for business. On a normal day, I love going to work. I wake up in such the greatest moods, but every time you walk out them doors right now, you're like, I survived another 10 hours and I don't feel sick. Amazon shipping dock worker Tanya Ramsey sent her son, who has asthma, to live with relatives to limit his exposure. In a blog post, Amazon's senior VP of Worldwide Operations, Dave Clark, called associates like her heroes of the COVID-19 crisis. There's definitely positives. Like I went in like, okay, I'm on these front lines. I'm an essential worker. I'm up there with everybody out there still risking their lives. But then it's like, does this kid really need this Xbox One remote? Do they really need this case of monsters? So I'm really fighting a virus to send out your toenail clipper, or I'm really fighting a virus to send out your dildo to you. It's, it's things, I feel like if you don't need it right now, don't order it. But Amazon is also shipping millions of essential items from food to personal protective equipment and medical supplies. In March, Amazon stopped accepting shipments into its warehouses of anything except essential goods, and many non-essentials have been heavily delayed getting to customers. But now, Amazon is accepting non-essentials into its warehouses again, in limited quantities. It's hard for them to turn off vendors and turn off sellers and turn off fulfillment capacity, but they think it's the right thing for the world. Um, and you know, the leadership there made it very clear that they're going to put the good of the country, the good of the world, ahead of um, the good of both themselves and their stakeholders. Dave Glick spent nearly 20 years in management at Amazon, working under Dave Clark for part of that time. I've seen Dave Clark get incensed when uh, people in his organization didn't put safety first. That said, he is also trying to feed the world. Um, he is trying to keep our supply chain running, and um, that's a hard, hard line to walk. My mom uh, is undergoing chemotherapy, so she hasn't been able to leave her house uh, since December, since her treatment starts. I feel like I'm helping my mom and folks like her who can't leave the house because they're at super high risk. As the general manager of a 3,500-person fulfillment center in Connecticut, Adrian Melendez is now in charge of getting associates protective gear and marking the building so workers can easily identify six-foot distancing. He's been with Amazon for nearly 10 years. We're one of the few large businesses that are uh, getting the critical items people need to their doorstep. Uh, and knowing that is certainly um, something everybody wears uh, very proudly around the building. So publicly they'll say, we are focused on shipping essential items. Behind the scenes, when you talk to the workers, they're shipping everything, right? I'm not seeing nothing come through the line that is essential. Nothing at all. No more hand sanitizer, no face masks, no disinfectant wipes, no toilet paper. So we basically risk our lives to send out non-essential items. France, meanwhile, ordered Amazon to stop all non-essential deliveries, saying it would be fined 1 million euros every day it failed to comply. In response, Amazon temporarily shut down all its warehouses in France, and the EU head of operations has stepped down. Meanwhile, some workers worry about the virus spreading through the items they're shipping out. A study by the National Institutes of Health found the virus is stable for up to 24 hours on cardboard and two to three days on plastic and stainless steel. Amazon is a breeding ground for it with how many people we have, how much 
stainless steel and plastic. So we got our last text that we had another confirmed case. Workers from at least 50 warehouses have tested positive, and at least one Amazon worker in California has died from complications of COVID-19. Walmart, Target, everybody's facing the same challenge. It's, it's how you rise up to meet that challenge that matters. I don't know if that person that touched that box before me was infected or the person before that. So we actually implemented this routine when I get off work. I, all my clothes go into a bag that gets left on my front porch. I'm the breadwinner of the family, so should I not go to work? Is there a way I can make up the same $170 that I just missed? What can I do to provide for my family even though this virus is going on? Mario Crippen has been working at an Amazon warehouse in Michigan for almost two years, where there are confirmed cases. He also follows a rigorous routine to sanitize when he gets home, and he's looking for work elsewhere. Right before starting at Amazon, Crippen lost his first child to sepsis at just eight days old. So potentially every time I walk into work and come back home, I could bring the virus to my three-month-old child, which I'm, a, which I'm very highly scared of because I don't want to lose another child in my lifetime. Amazon has temporarily closed a handful of U.S. warehouses for deep cleaning after workers tested positive, sometimes only after state orders. Despite the confirmed cases at Crippen's warehouse, however, it's never been closed. What they really need to do is just shut it down, close everything. There are a million square feet and multiple floors, and uh, you know the product is probably the most challenging thing to clean. Amazon says it's tripled the size of cleaning teams and has started disinfectant fogging, a practice commonly used by hospitals and airlines. Out of 855,000 square feet, one person for each floor is coming around wiping down the station. Potentially, I could have already been at my station for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, and already been exposed to the virus. I feel like they should put a tub of sanitary wipes, disinfectant wipes, at every single station. We do have hand sanitizer throughout the building, but in like the higher traffic areas, we run out of it a lot faster, and it seems like it takes them a while to replace what's been emptied. Amazon says it's made over 150 significant process changes at sites around the world to ensure the health and safety of our teams. This includes distributing masks and gloves to employees. We have uh, these surgical grade masks that we uh, give out every day at the main entrance. Uh, and then for uh, all Amazonians throughout our facility, we have uh, PPE vending machines that give out supplies like uh, gloves and the other items that they may need, may need to do their task. Amazon now mandates face coverings for anyone entering Amazon buildings. But workers at some warehouses say availability was limited through early April. They told us there's limited quantities. So first come, first serve. If I don't make it there first, I don't get a face mask. CEO Jeff Bezos recently visited a fulfillment center where he thanked employees. Like, I really want to invite Jeff to come inside Amazon Ramos DTW1 and tell me, would you feel safe walking inside your warehouse with no safety equipment? And as workers arrive, they now get temperature checks before being allowed into work for the day. If they have a temperature above 100.4, they're sent home with up to five hours pay. They can return the next day for another temperature check, but won't be allowed back at work until they've gone three days without a fever. Amazon also says it's taking intense measures to keep employees six feet apart. It's staggering shift start times, break times, and staffing at some workstations. It's stopped morning meetings and processes that require team lifts, adjusted the spacing of chairs and tables in break rooms, added dividers between sinks in some bathrooms, and placed tape to mark spacing on warehouse floors to make social distancing more feasible. Still, some workers say this isn't enough. Some areas of the building, we cannot remain six feet apart from one another because some people got to walk past each other to get these boxes out. You got to walk past each other to load the trucks up. It's a small cramped space and it's hard to stay six feet away. Every area that we have an associate inside the building, whether it's packing or it's unloading, um, they're all able to stay six feet apart with the changes that we put in to re-engineer re the site uh, and re-engineer the workstations as well. There's some jobs you have to work side by side with each other and there's only a foot gap in between you and this other person. You can brush arms, you can brush hands, you brush shoulders, along with touching pretty much everything the same. 
Amazon says it will terminate employees who repeatedly intentionally violate social distancing rules and that it's using internal camera systems to capture opportunities to improve social distancing. Now they've designated certain stairwells are like up stairwells and down stairwells and they posted signs on the stairwells and then the signs are only in English while well, we have many languages in the warehouse. I've known some people who have gotten write-ups or final written warnings for different violations of that and of course and we worry about that being like selectively applied to certain workers. Amazon also adjusted training and hiring events after images surfaced of crowded rooms full of prospective Amazon employees sitting close together in the middle of March. Concerned workers like Crippen and Ramsey have organized walkouts at their warehouses around the country. We had about 40 employees walk out with us. They were taking our lives to be as important as the products we're sending. It was just realization that something needed to be done. Close the warehouse for deep cleaning and pay all employees. We deserve that. The building continues to operate while a subset of people are outside uh, protesting. So how effective is that? And, and then what does Amazon do? <laughs> do they fire those people? Staten Island warehouse worker Chris Smalls was fired hours after organizing a strike to demand better protections at his warehouse. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio ordered an investigation into the firing. I felt it was the right thing to do. Unfortunately, it cost me my job, but um, I don't want to work for a company that doesn't take care of their people. And the Amazon has dropped the ball on that. Amazon says Smalls broke social distancing rules. In total, Amazon has fired at least six employees who've spoken up against warehouse conditions, citing social distancing guidelines and other reasons. Senator Bernie Sanders called the firings obscene, and other Democratic lawmakers have spoken up in support of Amazon workers asking for more protections. Now, the National Labor Relations Board is investigating Amazon after workers in Chicago and Pennsylvania filed charges alleging Amazon retaliated against them for protesting. And some Amazon workers from warehouses around the country recently staged a mass call-out to demand all warehouses with positive cases be shut down for cleaning. Still, the vast majority of workers have not participated in walkouts. Amazon has a million workers. The walkouts are on the order of tens of workers or hundreds of workers. That's a very small percentage of the people who are uh, walking out of the warehouses. If they actually close the building and sanitize it what we want, how we want, for the two weeks, I would definitely go back to work. After Ramsey helped organize a walkout at her facility on April 1st, she decided not to return to work. Amazon offered all workers unlimited, unpaid time off through the end of April. It's not worth risking my life to go to work and pay the bills. If we fall behind, we fall behind but at least we'll live. Amazon is offering extra paid time off if a worker tests positive or is presumptively diagnosed but unable to get a test. And it's giving 14 days of paid leave to workers who have been in close contact with a diagnosed individual. We pay them for um, 14 days so they can focus on getting better and recovering at home and not worrying about losing their job or losing their pay while they're out uh, so they can take care of their family. Amazon is adding $2 to hourly pay and paying double the regular rate for any overtime worked, spending an expected $500 million on the increased wages. I don't feel like the extra $2 is worth my life. I'd rather get fired than to lose my life at this job. So do you value your life or do you value these little $17? They throw $2 extra at us. What is that? $2 hazard pay is, is not going to help people that much if, you know, if they get seriously ill or someone in their family does. Some workers have asked for a slower pace of work in order to prioritize safety measures. If they were to reduce the rate and probably eliminate all rate-based write-ups, it would give us more leniency and more time to do our job properly and safely and also try to keep six-foot distancing. Amazon says employees can log out of their system to wash their hands whenever they choose, without worrying about impact on their performance goals. Amazon is already um, changing the delivery speed on a lot of uh, packages, and so they're trying to do whatever they can to maximize capacity while keeping the workers safe. And people, I think customers, are understanding that, you know, one day and two day shipping that they're used to uh, may be three day or five day. As some workers decide to stay home, demand continues to surge. I know of at least 40, 50 people that have took leave. So it was definitely a lot more pressure on the employees that were there because we were definitely getting a large amount of orders. According to data analytics firm Comscore, Amazon's traffic in March was up more than 31% from March last year. 
To keep up, Amazon announced in March it would hire 100,000 new workers, and in April it announced plans to hire 75,000 more. I've also had a lot of conversations um, with folks who just started with us uh, here at Amazon um, because their restaurant or their uh, business that they were at before um, had to temporarily close down. Um, so they're very, they're very thankful that um, they still have a place where they can go. Hundreds of thousands of people have lost their jobs. Um, if they can go into a warehouse and start working tomorrow, they're happy, right? So it's not because they necessarily want to be there, but they need the money. In hopes of making warehouses safer and keeping them open, Amazon says it's developing a testing program for frontline workers, including those with no symptoms. In his annual letter to shareholders that came out April 16th, Bezos said, We have begun assembling the equipment we need to build our first lab and hope to start testing small numbers of our frontline employees soon. They're taking more steps than they usually do in a lot of other situations because of all of the scrutiny and because all of the workers speaking out. But at the same time, without widespread testing, they really can't guarantee everybody's safety. And I think as long as workers are the ones who are like making all of this thing work, that they should really prioritize our safety before their bottom line. They're critical to the well-being of the country right now. We have to do everything we can to make sure that nothing bad happens to Amazon. A lot of people depend on them. Um, uh, what we have to also make sure, though, is that they don't have any type of abusive labor practices. With his 20 years experience in management at Amazon, Glick says that even if some of its U.S. warehouses do shut down, Amazon will have no problem getting essential goods to customers. Jeff has been looking at ways to make Amazon anti-fragile over the last 10 years. And one of the ways is to have 150 fulfillment centers around the country so that if you lose a network or if it becomes plagued by the virus, you have redundancy. This crisis has brought them back to how do we help ourselves survive, but how do we help the country survive and the world survive? And that's where they do their best work.